Good morning. Today is the feast day of St. Anthony of Padua. Um, he's actually not from Padua, right? Where is he from? Italians don't know where Anthony's from? He's, you had get the American to tell you Italians where he's from. He's from Portugal. Anyway, uh, he's, from, he's from Lisbon, um, but uh, he, of course, went to Padua. Um, St. Anthony is known as a great preacher, which is interesting because the Franciscans aren't normally known for their preaching. Um, that's usually left to the Dominicans. In fact, there was an occasion of a priestly ordination where um, the Dominicans and the Franciscans came together, and the Franciscans assumed that the Dominicans were going to preach, right, because that's in their, in their name. They're the order of preachers. The Franciscans are the order of friars minor, um, and they assumed that the Dominicans were going to preach, but nobody was prepared, and so they looked to Anthony, and he very eloquently preached at his ordination. Um, he was known to draw in those who were away from the church. Um, he had the title Malleus Hereticorum, the hammer of heretics, um, but a hammer in the sense that he was able to draw them back in, not just simply beat them but to draw them back in and to be able to reconcile them. Um, there's a story of him preaching uh, to heretics at the coast in Italy, um, and a school of fish kind of gathered, and he preached to the fish. Uh, and then from there, the fish uh, yeah, listened, but all the other people came in, they're like, oh, look at this crazy guy preaching to the fish. Similar to Francis, when he would preach to the animals, the people would come and say, look at this crazy guy preaching to animals, but they would come and they'd listen to him. Um, so St. Anthony is uh, a great uh, a preacher for us, a great example uh, of holiness for us. In the gospel, Jesus um, is going through the Sermon on the Mount. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar and there recall that your brother has anything against you, leave your gift there at the altar, go first and be reconciled with your brother and then come and offer your gift. Um, the sign of peace at Mass there's always been a sign of peace at Mass. Um, in the old days, it wasn't offered commonly for the people. It was kind of done in a symbolic gesture, um, and usually only at the high Masses uh, by the priest and the ministers in the sanctuary. Um, the new rite of the Mass allows for a sign of peace. It's an optional thing that um, we just assume is common, and everybody does it, um, what is the purpose of the sign of peace? Is it a greeting? Is it a time for us to say, hi, how are you? Hey, it's good to see you again. Hope you had a good week. Um, is, it, is it an opportunity for us to socialize? No, not at all. The sign of peace is rooted in this. If you bring your gift to the altar and recall that your brother has anything against you, leave your gift there at the altar, go and be reconciled with your brother, and then come and offer your gift. So the sign of peace takes place right before the reception of Holy Communion, right? Somebody's ring door is being opened heard the ring, the ring bell. Um, anyway, uh, the, the sign of peace is offered right before the reception of Holy Communion, and it's meant to be a, sim a symbolic gesture whereby we recognize if I have anything against my brother, I offer peace before I may offer the sacrifice, before I may partake of the sacrifice, before I may partake of the Eucharist. People say, Father Tim, why don't we do the sign of peace at daily Mass? Well, because it's one of those things that's become so abused, right? We say, well, it, it, it's, it's the symbolic gesture of offering peace before partaking of the sacrifice, but for so many people, it's become this, like, slap you on the back and wave and shout, and hey, how are you? And, and so, in an effort to kind of try to minimize that, the sign of peace being an optional part of the Mass, not a required part, um, I, I choose not to exercise that option, uh, we do at Sunday Masses. I, I would honestly rather not do it at Sunday Masses because it does become a little chaotic. Um, we're, we do a lot better here than um, a lot of places because we have talked about it and said it's, it's not a greeting. It's not a time to, uh, to ask how you're doing, um, but rather it's a symbolic gesture of an offering of peace so that we may partake of the sacrifice of Christ on Calvary um, with a with a, a a prepared heart, and so um, today we'll do the sign of peace, okay, at daily mass because it's in it's in the gospel. But I don't I don't want to I don't want everybody reaching across aisles and you know and shooting hippie peace signs and all the all the all that stuff. Just 
Peace be with you. Peace be with you. It's a symbolic gesture. After Mass, I'll stand in the narthex. Heck, I might even hug somebody today. <laughs> I might. You never know. Um, that's an option that I choose rarely to exercise. Uh, but let, let, us, let us just be aware of that, the sign of peace. It's not, it's, not, um, it's not a friendly kind of greeting of, 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 of conversation, but rather it's a peaceful gesture of recognizing the peace of Christ that is with us um, and that we are called to forgive others. Right? When we say peace, we're saying, I, I, I offer you peace, I offer you forgiveness. As Christ has forgiven me, I offer you forgiveness as well. Right? If really we wanted to do the sign of peace correctly, we would go to somebody that we've offended. Um, we would walk up to them and we would say, hey, I've, I've offended you, um, and I'm very sorry for that. Will you forgive me? Can, can there be peace between us? Right? And perhaps there's certain uh, grave offenses that maybe we've committed that we're aware of and we know that we shouldn't come to the altar, that we shouldn't partake of the sacrifice because we've not made peace. If we're aware of some grave sin on our heart, if we've offended God and or neighbor in some grievous way, some grave way, that's why the church says you have to go to confession before you receive communion. If we've deliberately skipped Mass on Sunday, if we're aware of any other grave sin, the church says, go to confession. Make peace with God. Now, all sin offends God, but it also offends neighbor. We think, oh, well, but there's private sin, and, you know, not going to Mass on Sunday, how's that going to offend neighbor? Well, it offends neighbor because it's scandalous. It offends neighbor because we're not living up to the uh, promises of our baptism. It offends neighbor because it sets a bad example. And so before we approach the altar to offer our gift, we have to make peace with God and neighbor. So on this feast day of St. Anthony, recognizing um, how he's able to make peace even with heretics, reconciling them, calling them back to the Father, let us recognize the ways that we are called to be peacemakers on earth. Peacemaker doesn't just mean being a pacifist and being kind of sitting back and just, oh, and everything's fine, but rather to really work for peace, to talk to one another. Can you imagine if we did that in our country, if we actually like talked to people that we disagreed with and said, well, why do I disagree with you? People do that sometimes with me. They say, Father Tim, you said something that I've never heard before and I don't like it. Will you explain it to me? Sure, I'll explain it to you. Oh, well, I've never thought of it that way. Oh. And then we walk away peacefully. Others, nobody in this room, gets on their computer and starts sending little emails. Or they go among their group of friends and they start talking. Can you believe what he said? That doesn't create peace. That creates discord. That creates chaos. That creates a community in which love cannot be present, in which peace cannot be present. So let us work for peace. Let us work for peace that we may indeed be able to reconcile our differences, that we may be able to offer forgiveness as God offers his forgiveness to us.